We found previously that when we have some data relating X and Y, which is clearly quite well correlated, we can draw a line of best fits, also called a regression line, and we can find out the equation of this straight line. And for this particular set of data, 25463, 60, 100, 70, 90, 80, the equation of this line was y equals 8x plus 48. So let's first of all think about what these numbers mean. 8 is the gradient. And that means that every time you increase x by 1, y increases by 8. If x was 10, I'd get 80 plus 48. If x then becomes 11, I get 88 plus 48. So this gradient is telling us how much y increases for each x. So this tells us that the sales increase by 8 for each increase of 1 in x. So that's useful to know, and that's sensible. If I'm spending one, an extra £1,000 in advertising and I get £8,000 extra sales, that's good. If this grade had only been 0.9, I would have been worried. I'd be spending £1,000 on advertising and getting an extra £900 sales, which isn't a good deal. So this certainly needs to be bigger than 1 in this case. And the other number we can look at, 48, is the intercept. And if you remember on straight lines, the intercept means where does it cut the axis here, the y-axis. And that's the value of y that you get when x equals 0. So this is saying even if you do no advertising, you will still get £48,000 worth of sales. So um, the sales when no ads is 48. Remember, all of these are in thousands of pounds. So those two numbers are useful. They're telling us something about the behaviour of this system. What can we then do with this line? Well, we can use it to make predictions. And there are two sorts. Interpolation, we might say, what are the sales if I spend four and a half thousand pounds on advertising? So what happens if x equals four and a half? I can predict, if I look at my um, graph, four and a half is somewhere like here. So what I'm going to do is work out what my line says the corresponding value of y should be. This is not a perfect line, there are errors, so it's not going to give an exact answer, but it will give us a rough idea. So if I spend £4,500 on advertising, the resulting sales will be 8 times 4.5 plus 48, which is 36 plus 48, which is 84. That's my prediction if I spend four and a half thousand pounds. And that's likely to be quite a good prediction because the value of x that I've chosen is within the range of existing data. You can also do something called extrapolation. What would happen if I spent £10,000 on advertising? What happens if we put x equals 10? Well, it's very easy to just put it in here again. And I'd get 8 times 10 plus 48, which is 128. So my model, my mathematical model, predicts that the sales now will be 128,000 if I increase advertising to 10,000. But that is a very dangerous assumption because we have no idea what happens as sales go higher and higher. And very often we might get a saturation effect 
we might have found that after a certain amount of sales, everybody's got the item. So the sales don't increase, increase anymore, however much we increase advertising. So we get an effect then, whereby things stop by going up, but then they tail off when the market is saturated. So if we're trying to find the Y corresponding to a value of X here, we would be very foolish to assume that the straight line continues. We would make that estimate, whereas in fact the sales are saturating out at that level. So extrapolation can be quite dodgy. We need to be very careful. But interpolation, where we're working with a value of X within the existing range, is usually very safe and in fact it's a good idea and it's what we do with the line of best fit. But we need to be very careful about extrapolation, putting in values of X that weren't in the original data range. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.